Hello everyone and welcome back to Technically Unsure, where I'm not really sure what I'm doing technically. What am I doing? So today we are going to take a look at a board that I found online. It seems like it's impressive from the specs and everything. It's almost like Raspberry Pi size, but it comes with Intel processor. And it is from a company called Aeon, I am going to say. And the product name is Pico Wrap 4. So there are like a couple different versions of this. They have i3, i5, i7 versions, and I bought the i3 version. And let me actually show you. That that's it. Pico i3 32PE HDMI with LVDS, two LANs, two comms, four USB, TPM, MPCIe, M.2, 2230, GPIO, whatever. Very impressive, but I have to say the price is also expensive. Impressive. I believe uh, this is like 600 something bucks. So by the way, this is just a fan. I mean, it doesn't come with it. You have to buy a fan for it. This is 30 bucks. This I know. So that's a 30 bucks <laughs> fan. Let's open this up. Oh, wow what it says when choosing an adapter or a power supply please refer to the official website data sheet for recommendations sure okay so this is actually a size of a raspberry pi almost look i mean that's the board that's very impressive there is an i3 1320pe cpu in here and we have to put a ddr5 sodium and i know that max ram that it supports is a 32 gig it comes with two usb 3.2 i believe ports and two gigabit ethernet actually i'm sorry sorry one is one gigabit one is 2.5 gigabit odd choice i know but it is what it is so you see there are two different chipsets behind the ethernet i believe one comes with intel i226 and one comes with intel i 219 yeah that should be the artist memory there is sata connection over here m.2 slot right over here and this says that this is a mini card slot this is a front panel connection but it doesn't come with it so i guess we have to buy a separate cable of some sort for the front panel connector this is the spi flash in here that you can flash it i guess this is the lvds connector for this monitor these two are com ports but again these are all proprietary these connections these things I didn't even see it in there as an accessory. I just saw this and I ordered it. But I guess there are some other cables and connectors because these are unique. No other board I've seen uses anything like that. In the back, nothing special really. We talked about it as the RAM and the CPU. And yeah, the I.O. is limited to that. So this seems to be a way to power it. But what if I don't want to do that? Well, I got no choice. Let me grab a 12 volt power supply, wire this up. And oh, by the way, let's take a look at this. Bunch of screws and stuff. Oh, wow. That's a beast. Okay. So I'm going to trust their own thermal pad. But I mean, just look at it. Is it enough to cover it? Yeah, it's okay. Yeah. So you have to put the standoffs over here. And this gets screwed into that. I can do it like this. Put it over here. And then just put it on the board and squeeze the nut in the bottom. I'm just hoping I'm doing it correctly because when I do it like like this that's exact height it's just fits and sits right there yeah i'm kind of sure that's the way it is but i don't like it i have to admit okay so i found the the one i had one of these mixed nuts things and uh, i found out that m3 nuts which is this is exact fit for this so you need m3 and uh, nuts and in here i found a crucial ddr5 32 gigabyte which is the maximum ram that this computer apparently supports so we are going to install 32 gigabyte so dim ram the other way okay so if we install the ram this way would this still fit oh, okay it fits so now i have to put these nuts in there yeah that should be it let's go into fast forward all right i installed the ram i installed the fan but it's upside down so <laughs> i guess uh, i will use it this way i don't have the case for it and also i have to clean up this mess so let me figure out something for the power and uh, connect the cables and wires and everything and then i will be right back so here is what i found do you remember this i used it schnitt power in the other video so here is a dial i dialed it up to 12.1 volt and i have this laying around dangerous i just wanted to show you guys that i set it on the 12 volt okay and i'm gonna remove that now no power let it die and then we are going to hopefully insert the cables and hopefully it will turn on 
we'll see so here you go okay that's solid okay that's solid too okay i have everything wired up hopefully there won't be any issues it is very janky i understand so let's connect this i see the power oh oh fan is blowing let me see if anything comes on the screen 27 watts already okay still nothing on the screen i placed also windows 11 usb in there just in case it boots up and everything 20 watts now settling down probably doing oh 45 wow i see the bio the so Pico Wrap 4 R1 is already there. So CPU configuration, there you go, you have it here. So there is a 13 generation i3 1320PE as, as I said, 1.7 gigahertz and virtualization is enabled, hyper threading is enabled. Oh, Intel ME, okay. That we can do the usual stuff to go to the BIOS and remove that. TPM is there, there you go. Another TPM settings over here. NVMe, so I had a four terabyte Samsung 9990 installed pro and hardware monitor the rpm is working the fan is detected the temperatures are all good 42 in idle though so gpio all right power management power mode atx type all that stuff aeon smart boost maximum performance of course this is technically unsure we benchmark stuff chipset stuff memory config 32 gig detected lvds yeah we don't have lvds connection yeah map x intel me password nice okay let's uh save that settings that i just changed go back and then i'm gonna boot from the usb okay so i think i have some news first let me show you what i did i was able to install and it's the idle is 10 watts so i was able to install the debian i believe it's the latest debian look Look, it loads up very fast so if we go to let's say 4k video demo lg okay so zero frames dropped it's playing 4k everything is working out of box okay let's try a couple tests right like sysbench 12 cores okay let's do a sysbench threads equals proc cpu run power consumption 44 watts 45 watts and we are getting 24,000. just so you know so my raspberry pi 5 right this is 10,000. now let's do a stress ng which is a better test okay as you can see it went up to 67 watts 68 watts and fan ramped up 71 now because of the fan 72 and it's going strong oh wow 441,000. so another test that i want to do i want to see if i can dump the bias flash rom dash p internal for the internal chip and read to a file called bios.bin it is working perfectly it detected the chip and it's 32,000. so 32 megabytes flash chip that contains the BIOS code and we are able to read it. okay that was fast oh yeah we read it let's see there you go 32 meg I have ghex I guess yeah I have and BIOS that bin okay ghex is not cooperating all right doesn't matter so now what we can do is uh, go to the Intel ME cleaner github thing okay there you go I forgot to install git well, you see how snappy it is right it's very very snappy absolutely i can use this as a data driver this tiny miny computer so let's go there let's move the bias from the previous folder over here and i keep forgetting the syntax for this so we come back here and then cleaner that's oh modified there you go copy that and we say bias that bin wow python is not installed okay okay it didn't find full image detected the metxe region is valid but the firmware is corrupted or missing oh by the way the both ethernet 2.5 and 1 gigabit was detected during the debian installation so it installed patches and updates as it was installing so that worked but let me show you ip address there you go you can see that that's my ethernet cable and it's already up and it is 2.5 gigabit right so let's do a test iperf 350 bidirectional Okay, so that's the gigabit ethernet, sorry. So now I'm gonna switch to the other one, okay. There you go, gigabit port works. Now let's go to the other port, okay. Let's wait for it to receive an IP from the ATP. Okay, we got the IP, now repeat the test. Let's see if it is a 2.5 or is it still the one gig? So the one next to HDMI port is 2.5 gigabit and it's exactly 2.5 and the other one is exactly gigabit and both are working and we tested that as well. Okay, another thing I wanna test is the NVMe storage, right? so let me see we have sda disk dash l okay so that's nvme i don't even know what the fda is okay probably that's the usb drive stick sorry that's my bad i have to remove that all right now hd parm yep direct 
there you go so two gigabytes per second that's megabyte not megabit as far as i know that's megabyte so disk reads is here that's also here so we got debian installed completely it is working perfectly with absolutely no problem 4k video obviously there is no problem drivers everything is working perfectly it is quiet just when you are using it a lot like stress ng it ramped up and it went up to like 71 72 watts but other than that this is a very snappy very small intel i3 based svc all operating system works now give me a couple of minutes let me retry windows 11 i want to test the gpu as well a little bit hold on a second okay so we are back so i borrowed this power adapter 12 volt 6 amp from TerraMaster video so i borrowed that and i did this botched wire thing it's ugly but it works okay i got everything to work windows 11 is working yeah look at my screen there is the cinebench score 538 and here is the 3d mark score and the power consumption when it's idle in windows it goes 11 10 12 goes up and down when you're just let's say open up chrome like look goes to 13 16 17 and then gonna call, dial back 21 comes back so the power consumption there you go it goes back to 12. so let's say if you go to a website goes up a little bit 28 comes back so something like that okay debian works ubuntu works windows 11 works everything out of box is working and even some game right i have a bunch of games but this is the one that is like a little bit heavier side also the size wise it's like 32 gig game right but you know it is absolutely playable okay 60 fps your truck simulator it's working so overall it is an impressive piece of hardware and the ssd and everything is super fast so if in terms of dimensions so this is seven centimeters by 10 and the height with heatsink two and a half centimeters if you go all the way up to here so that's gonna be four and a half okay so you might say it is a very powerful let's say laptop but it is in a tiny tiny box and then six hundred dollars for a board just to install windows 11 i mean i can get a cut as mine right we did a video on that also check that out if you haven't let me actually grab it here you go so this cut as mine is mind portable workstation forget the gpu forget the gaming stuff uh, you can connect 40 60 ti to this forget about all that just the 700 dollars 600 dollars power wise yeah a kind of same i guess so this one comes with i7 actually and also this is 800 dollars premium one not 700 so 200 dollars more bigger more powerful obviously but i'm honestly don't know who the audience is but if you want to build uh, work on a project right you want to do something raspberry pi is not enough you want a device that comes with a 2.5 gigabit and a gigabit ethernet two usb 3.2 ports a full size hdmi one SATA connection and VME SSD with full power, full speed. And an i3 or i5 or i7. You can actually buy this with i7 as well to beat this, right? And so if you want something like that, you can go with this. There is not much of a GPIO and stuff that's going on here, but there are COM ports apparently, RS stuff, 232, whatever. But other than that, I don't see this being much of a, you know, developer friendly. I mean, you can use this as a workstation. Absolutely. You can build a case around it, put it in a case build it yourself with a 3d printer right and design and build a case and put this power outlet with a proper cable management here leave this out sticking out of the case and every time you need to use it you just plug this in there and use it so yeah i just wanted to share this with you guys i found this fascinating i bought it so i can't complain i got what i paid for and everything is working but does it make sense that's up to you to decide okay yeah i just wanted to share it with you guys and I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Took me a lot of effort to get everything working, but I'm glad everything just worked. Okay, thanks for watching. Let me know all your questions down below, and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.